in this video i'm showing you how to commission the brand new valiant ecotech plus combination boiler with its brand new touchscreen controls now the reason i'm making this video is because of course the screen now is touchscreen and i know a lot of people just don't like this new technology it might be a little daunting but i'm going to run you through it right from when i first switched the boiler on and how to navigate you through through the setup assistant because there are a couple of additional parameters and i actually phoned valiant up myself to find out exactly what they mean so i'm going to run you through those so you don't have to guess what you set them to or needing to call valiant i show you all the various menus and how to navigate through them so that when you come to commission the boiler that you'll be able to whiz through it without any hesitation. I want to quickly let you know that I made several other videos all about this boiler. The first video is all about Valiant's brand new Senso Room Pure. That's a simple thermostat to have a simple operation of the boiler. When you fit that thermostat, it also unlocks the timer, which is built into the boiler. Now you may be wondering, is that Boiler Plus? And yes, it is Boiler Plus because the thermostat has load compensation. Now there are some other little quirky things about this room thermostat. If you want to know more about that thermostat and what to expect when you fit one, you can watch that video. The second video is all about Valiant's Senso Room. That's where you have a room thermostat and then everything else is controlled from an app which is on your phone. And there's also a receiver box which fits onto the boiler. And I've also made a video for the homeowner. That's how to operate the boiler. So how to adjust the hot water temperature, how to adjust your central heating temperature, how to reset the boiler and top it up if it's needed. Now I do find these videos are very popular. So when you finish commissioning the boiler, you've explained everything to your customer. You know the full well that while you leave the property, they're probably gonna forget everything which you've just told them. So if you can point them in the direction of the how to operate this boiler video, then hopefully they'll be able to do it for themselves. And you won't be getting unnecessary phone calls. All those videos would have been in the cards or you'll find them in the description below. Right, that's enough for now. Let's get it on with unwrapping this boiler and then showing you what's new about it and commissioning it. So here's the old Worcester boiler that I'm going to be replacing with the new Valiant combination boiler. So over here we have the new Valiant Ecotech Plus 826. We have the boiler protection kit and I've also got the Senso Room Pure. And that's Valiant's answer to a simple control for this boiler. And in case you're wondering, it is Boiler Plus. And now you can see unpacking the boiler is slightly different. We lay the boiler on its back, pull the tags all the way around and then we can just lift the lid off. Then at the bottom here, we have all the tails for the boiler. They're the same as before. We've got this new rubber piece. This is for the condensing pipe. We've got the fittings pack, which is exactly the same as before, apart from they have changed the gas valve. So now there is a test point on the gas valve, but everything else is exactly the same. The hanging bracket is exactly the same as before. So if you're removing an old Valiant boiler and the hanging bracket is the same as this one, you can leave that bracket on the wall. If we take a look at the bottom boiler, it's slightly different than the old boilers. We now have two screws and we have this little clip here. So it's slightly different than the clips that we had before. And just here is the data port where we can plug in the new wireless controls. The condensing trap is slightly different than before, but I'll show you that in the video a bit further on. And now we have a drain here for the auto air vent and the electrical connections have moved back slightly. Now, the first thing I always do is to remove the front cover of the boiler to remove any chances of scratching that front panel. Now they put these two little bumps in the bottom of the boiler. I think that's just to stop the clips from scratching your side or floor, or maybe to stop the clips from being damaged. I think Valiant advised to leave the cover on, but I've always taken them off. And then I'll put it somewhere safe so there's no chance it can get damaged. Then we can just lift the boiler up and then take it out of its packaging. Something else new on this boiler is they have added some insulation to the back of the boiler. Now this insulation is pretty thick and why I hung the boiler on the wall is seen to hold the boiler off the wall a little bit. Because of how thick this insulation is, I did find it a little harder to hang the boiler on the wall. So I bent the lug out a little bit on the back of the boiler just so I could make sure that it caught the bracket correctly and it slid down the way you know it should. When you look at the flu connection, that's exactly the same. So now the old combi's gone, I've got my new flue in the hole and I've got the template on the wall. Now I always mark my hanging bracket out like this because you can't really get it wrong. Now I've got the boiler on the wall and the flue is all completed. Now I've finished all the pipe work, it's just a case of wiring it up. You can see how much smaller this boiler is than the old Worcester, but the tires have been cut away on the wall. 
I thought I'd just add that that insulation on the back is really thick and it kind of holds the boiler off the wall. So the boiler is sort of springy on the back. So I put an additional couple of screws in the bottom just to pull the boiler back against the wall. You can see a screw in there and I've also put a screw over there, just pulling it back against the wall. Now it's just a case of wiring up the boiler. Now the circuit board looks pretty much the same as the last one and we do have this additional plug here that says live neutral on earth but that is not where we bring in the supply because you can see on the back there it says OPT1. Our live neutral earth terminal is exactly the same as before and we have the plug up here which we can wire it into. We've still got our 230 volt room thermostat connection if we want to use some third party controls. Over on the other side here, we have our bus connection, same as before, and we have the room thermostat connection. That's the volt free one, exactly the same as before. I'm sure you all know, but do not put 230 volts into these connections because you will destroy the circuit board if you do that. Another slight difference with this boiler is they've now moved the spark ignition unit up here. There's now this additional ionization probe, which we must not touch in any way, otherwise it will no longer work. And of course, there's also a new gas valve. So now the boiler is all wired in and it's ready to go. Just before I get into that commissioning of the boiler, I just show you this connection here, which goes onto the condensing trap. You can see they've changed the condensing trap to the same as some of the other valent boilers. We can then give it a twist, pull it down, clean it out, and then easily put it back again. So now I've finished flushing this system out. I've added my X100 to the system, but my boiler is still isolated from the whole system. So there's no water at all in the boiler. I thought I'd just add, I fitted this lit radiator in a hallway for her, attaching a piece of plywood onto that plastic panel. She's really happy with that. I'm happy with the pipe work. It's as far against the wall as I get it. And once this homeowner puts a bit of box work around the bottom of the pipe work, it's gonna make it look really nice and neat. I'm just going to apologize for the reflection in the screen. It just reflects everything in the room. I just need to point out that at this point in time, I have not fitted any heating controls to the boiler. So no room thermostat, no timer and no valent sensor control. Installing controls will be in separate videos. So here we go now for the moment of truth. I'm going to turn this boiler on for the first time and then see what happens. So turn on the switch and then straight away, we've got this sign coming up saying Valiant. The fan starts running, so I'm just gonna mute that down a bit. And you can see we've gone straight into installation assistant. I think this is pretty straightforward. We just touch the tick and now we need to enter our access code. So adjust that, we just use this plus slider here and just slide it up until we get to the correct code. Let me know in the comments whether you think I should be shown this code or whether I should keep it hidden. Then we just press the tick again, which takes us through to the date. Again, this is pretty straightforward. You just use a slider, slide it up and down to change the date. And you can see down on the bottom there, the tick is flashing, telling us that we need to press that to set that setting. So now I'm gonna change that to seven, cause we're in July, press the tick, go through the year, year's okay. So I'm gonna press tick again. Now I need to adjust the time. And of course, it's exactly the same again. Use a slider, scroll up and down and press the tick button. Pretty intuitive. As soon as I've finished setting the time, it jumps straight to fill the installation with water. I would normally have filled the boiler with water, but I just wanted to see what would happen if I didn't. So now I'm gonna go underneath the boiler, open that first valve, and then I'm gonna open the second one like that. And then we should see that pressure rising on the front there. And there you can see it's gone up a little bit. I thought I'd just point out we've still got that gauge on the inside and a pump's been flashing away there the whole time. I'm pretty sure that means that it's running, but it is really quiet. But you can see this display is really nice and clear. It tells you exactly how much pressure's in it. You've got a minimum pressure, a maximum pressure, and we can see the bar rising up there. Now the fan is still running, but it is just about to stop. And there we go, the fan has now stopped running. I'm just gonna top this up just a little bit further. I think the pressure is a little low here today because it's taken a long time for that to rise up. So I'm just going to close up both those valves now. There we are though, 1.5, happy with that. Now I can press the tick. Now the screen's changed to purging where it says the automatic purging function is carrying out in the background. The screen then changes to hydraulic operation mode where you can see it says bypass and constant. Now I did have a look in the installation manual and it was a little unclear. So I phoned up Valiant's technical line to make sure I knew exactly what this setting was and what I should be setting it to. 
Valiant told me that this is to adjust the auto bypass settings and that we should make no adjustment to this. The bypass is basically closed unless there is a complete blockage. For instance, like closing the isolation valves on the bottom of the boiler. So we just press tick and move on. And then here's another new setting, adjust available pressure, 200 millibar. Again, a little unclear in the book. So asking Valiant what it means, this adjusts the pressure of the pump. So what the pressure the pump pumps at. We can use this sliding control here to adjust this. And it just goes around in a continuous loop of from 100 millibars up to 390 millibars. But the Valiant technical man I spoke to said that we should leave this setting as it is. So I'm going to leave it at 200 millibars. And there we go, 200 millibars. So I'm now going to press the tick again. This one's pretty straightforward. Is natural gas the correct gas type? Again, just move the slider up one to change it to yes, it's the correct gas type. There we are. And then I just press the tick again, move on to the next menu. And then here's another new question. Is the installation installed with a horizontal flue, 600 by 100, which this one is. So I just press the tick button for yes. I'm presuming that if I click no, then it would have asked me if I had a vertical flue and maybe how many lengths of extension have been used. Now the flue on this boiler is less than one meter, but I thought I'd see what would happen if I change this to a yes and then press tick. And you can see that it says single flue configuration and then adjusted. But what I wanted to show you here is that if you think you've made the mistake and you want to change something, you can just press the back arrow and go back through the menu and change the setting you want to. So you can see I've gone back to the gas setting here. So I just adjust that down to yes, press tick. It shows loading again. And then we got the flue type, press tick again for the horizontal flue. Is the flue greater than five meters? Definitely not. So no, again, this comes up single flue configuration adjusted. And then the installer assistant moves on to the next item. And then it asked me if I've got weather compensation control system fitted. I haven't. So I'm going to select off and press the tick. Now it's asking me for my contact details. Now I can leave this as it is with the Valiant logo and phone number, but I'm going to change it to my own details. So now we need to use the slider again and we need to go all the way down the menu, right down to the very end where there's a cross so we can delete the Valiant details. So we just scroll down like that. We just keep on going. And now you can see the delete icon is highlighted. Then I keep touching the tick icon to remove all the valiant details with the delete icon highlighted. And there we go. It's all deleted now. Now it's just a case of scrolling through the alphabet there, selecting all the letters to create my own name. When I find my letter, press the tick and there we go. M for Mark. And then again, just keep going through. I'm going to speed this up because you don't need to see me write this whole thing down. Now adding your details in here is quite important if you want your customer to call you every time there is a problem with the boiler, because when a fault code does come up, your details come up also to contact you whenever a fault code comes up on the boiler. So if you don't want your customer contacting Valiant, make sure that you put your details into the boiler. And I'll show you how your contact details will be displayed in just a minute or two. So now you can see I've finished putting in my name. It does take a little while, a bit time consuming, but like I said, you do want to make sure that you get this done. After you finish entering your name, you want to scroll all the way down to the far right hand side where there is a save icon. So we don't press the tick with this one. We go all the way down, keep on going, do, 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 do. There we go, right to the end, save, press tick, and now that's saved. And now it goes on to the valiant phone number. Obviously you want to delete this and put our own phone number in there. So it's exactly the same process again. Changing the phone number is a little quicker because there's no letters in the menu. So we just scroll along to the delete icon like that. Press delete. We're pressing the tick button. So there we go. Tick, 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 tick. Delete the valiant number. And then of course I'm going to enter in my own phone number. Now I'm not going to show you my own phone number for obvious reasons, but you just scroll through, put in your own phone number, and then you need to scroll to the end again until you get to the save icon and then the press tick to save your phone number into the installation assistant. And now it says that you have completed the installation assistant. Press the tick again. 
And now this pops up on the screen. Welcome, configuration completed. Now hand over the installation to your customer using the question mark. So the idea of this menu is now you get your customer and you get them to run through everything on the front of the boiler so they know how to adjust everything. Before I show you some more menus, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos and products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Now I mean no offence to any homeowners that might be watching this but as a heating engineer I know as soon as I have explained everything to them on the boiler and I walk out the door a lot of the information they would have forgotten. Maybe this menu will help but we can only wait and see. Let us all know in the comments below how your customers get on with using the menu. Now, to be honest, I thought this was a little more confusing than using the assistant, which I've used before. So what is it asking me here? So it's basically telling us that the control element are the green buttons. And by touching that button, you will activate whatever you are pressing. So it's now telling the customer that by pressing the tick button, you save any settings that you change. So I press that flashing tick and now it tells me that the main menu is the button directly underneath. So I can press that one, see that one's flashing. I thought I'd just point out at the top here, it says control element. You can see it's five of 12. So we've got 12 items to go through. Basically, it's going to make a customer use every button on the front of the boiler. Now I'm going to whiz through these quickly. So obviously this one here, number six, is just telling us how to use the scroll button on the side here. So we can scroll up and down. It then tells us how to adjust the central heating by pressing this button here and then adjust the hot water temperature, pressing that button there. How to get help, you can press the question mark. And element number 10, that's for us heating engineers. So the button down our right hand corner is a chimney sweep mode. So by pressing that button, we can set the ball into maximum or minimum power to take a gas analyzer reading. Element 11 is telling us about the power button. Now that's slightly different. One press to turn the boiler on or off in the standby mode, but it also acts as a reset button. And to reset the boiler, we press and hold the button for three seconds. And number 12 is just telling us that we have finished doing all the control elements and to press tick to move on. Back to the user manual, we also have the menu introduction. So let's take a quick look at that. Menu introduction is one of four. This doesn't really tell you a lot. It just tells you what control, information and settings do in the main menu. So if I press tick, you can see it tells you what control does. This is where you can set system parameters, e.g. time and temperatures, etc. Press tick again, and then we got information. This is where you can read installation manuals such as temperatures and energy data, etc. Settings, this is where you can adjust settings such as language, date and time, etc. Like I said, not really much help, but maybe it will help the homeowner. So let's just press that menu button in the middle there. And now you can see it says heating status. There's a line through it, so that means the heating is turned off. Now, here's something quite important to know. If you don't have any controls fitted or you have a third party control, you'll be able to adjust the central heating temperature. But if you've installed the Senso Room Pure Valiant Thermostat, you won't be able to adjust the central heating flow temperature. This is all done by the load compensation on the thermostat. I'm presuming this is going to be the same for the other Valiant controls. But because I don't have any Valiant controls fitted, I can adjust the flow temperature of the central heating, which I've done by using the slider and then pressing the tick afterwards. Then to adjust the hot water temperature, all we need to do is press the picture of a tap and then we can adjust the temperature of the hot water by moving the slider up, set that to 50 degrees, press the tick and there we go, that's saved. And our hot water temperature is now set at 50 degrees. Pretty straightforward. If we press the back arrow at any time, that would take us back through the menu and back to the home screen. Now I've finished running through the setup menus, I'm back on the home screen and the boiler started running. Now you can see the icon flashing in the top of the display there. That's telling us that preheat or comfort or warm start, whatever you like to call it, that is now running. 
and the burner is on. And the default setting seems to be preheat on. And of course, we can turn the preheat on or off, and I always like to turn it off for more efficiency. You can see the icon flashing at the top there. Looks like someone lying down in the bed, and we can also see the flame is on. And I think it's going to get up to 50 degrees, and then it'll shut off. And there we go, 51, 52. And now preheat has stopped running, and the boiler is preheated to 50 degrees. If you want to know more about preheat, then I'll be explaining that in the how to operate this boiler video. Now to turn preheat on and off, we need to press that middle menu button. With control selected, you then press the tick like that. That will then show us the comfort mode and you can see that it says on. All we need to do is use a sliding control to move the menu up to comfort mode. So that is highlighted. Press the tick button to adjust that on or off. I'm going to select off. Press tick again. There we go. Comfort mode deactivated. And now you can see it says comfort is now off. I just quickly will show you what's in the other menu. So we've got information menu. Press the tick to highlight that. Then we have a whole lot of menus in here which we can see or adjust. And you can see that one of those is the status codes. If you ever like to use those codes. Here's a new menu, energy data. This is an interesting one. Don't really see what use it has, but it is quite interesting to look at. And you can now see it says loading, and then we can now see how much energy the boiler has used over the last time periods. We can do exactly the same for the domestic hot water. Again, I'm not really sure how much use this is, but the information is there if someone wants to look at it. Now here's a menu item you'll probably want to look at and that's settings. And in settings here, you can see we've got a chimney sweep mode, there's an installer level. So you can access the chimney sweep mode from the menu as well as pressing the button on the front of the boiler. And you can see we have three options here. We have adjustable heat load and we have a maximum and a minimum. If we go into the adjustable heat load, obviously we can adjust the power of the boiler by using the sliding control like that, taking it from its minimum power, which you can see is 2.7 kilowatts. Or we could adjust it up to 20.4 kilowatts, but obviously that is not the maximum power of this boiler. If we move down to maximum output, you can see it says maximum domestic hot water output. And if I select that, you can see it says maximum domestic hot water output of 26.5 kilowatts. And it also gives you a time remaining of how long it's going to run for. Now I've finished doing my analyzing reading, I can now press the back button, which should take us back to the other screen, where I can now do a minimum load reading. When I've finished doing that, I can then press the back arrow, which would take us back to the settings menu. Right, now let's take a closer look at the installer level. So I've selected that, press tick, and now we need to enter the access code. So here's a question to everyone and all the gas engineers. Should I be putting the access code in or should I leave it fuzzed out like I have done here? Leave a little message in the comments. I'll be really interested to know what you think. If you're an engineer, hopefully you know where to find that code or you already know what that code is. So let's just whiz through this quickly. From the installer level, we can access all the settings. We can go back into the installer assistant. We've done that already, so let's just move on. Here's a new one, QR service code. As I was using my phone to record this, I couldn't actually see what this code was going to give me. But you can see the boiler gives you this code and then obviously you can scan it with your phone. Maybe it gives you all the boiler information like serial numbers and such like and maybe a service date and time. Then again, press the back arrow to come out of that menu. And now we've got some further ones down here. We've got test modes and we've got some diagnostic codes as well. So we can scroll down to those. Let's see what test modes do. So we go into a test mode menu and then we got check programs. Let's select that one. And in here we have the P programs are nice and clearly labeled. I always use these at P settings. And if you've not used them before, you should definitely start using them. They're in all the Valiant boilers right back to the last Turbomax. I always use these when I'm commissioning the boiler. You can see the order is slightly different to what they had before. And they've removed a minimum heat load with adjustable load. I think these P settings, now they've been labeled, are pretty self-explanatory. So let's just back out of here. Not sure what this electronic self-test is for. That doesn't seem to do anything. It just says it's empty. If you know what it's for, maybe just leave a little note in the comments. And finally, let's take a quick look at actuator test. Now this could be really useful. It allows you to test individual items in the boiler. 
Now that they're clearly labeled, it makes it much easier to use these test items. Let's just back out of here and scroll down to the next item, which is diagnostic codes. Obviously, these are exactly the same as before. Again, they're really nice and clearly labeled, so we no longer need to go looking through that book to find out what those D settings actually mean when we're adjusting them, if we need to adjust them. So let's just go back again. I think fault history, that's pretty self-explanatory. You go into fault history, you can check what faults you've got. Exactly the same as before. I think the next one is another new one, limp home mode history. I've not seen that before. We've still got factory settings. That's where we can reset the boiler to all its default settings. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna finish off now by just showing you what happens when you get a fault code on this boiler. So here we have an F29 fault. All I've done is turn the gas cock off. It's obviously to do a gas test. And you can see there it says ignition unsuccessful following flame lost. And there's also my name and my telephone number. And the only things highlighted on the screen are the tick button and the power button, which is also the reset button. So I thought I'd press the tick button and see what happens. That just takes us back to the normal display. So I thought, okay, let's try running a hot tap. So I turn the hot tap on like that. Nothing happens on the display. So I turn the hot tap back off again. So I thought I'd press the menu item because that's highlighted. That didn't really tell me anything either. So I press the back button and straight away we come back to F29. Now to reset this boiler, all we need to do is to press and hold the power button for three seconds. There we go, it's now reset and now the boiler's restarting. Now personally, I think it would have been good if Valiant had put a little message up there saying to reset the boiler, press and hold the power button for three seconds. And if the problem persists, then call your heating engineer. I think that would have been far more useful because I can see thousands of people up and down the country calling their heating engineers for something simple like maybe they just run out of credit. Now here's an F28 fault. Rather than press the tick, I'm gonna press and hold the power button for three seconds and that's just gonna reset the boiler. And there we go, the boiler's now reset and it's up and running again. So I think that's enough about commissioning. Don't forget when you're finished, peel off that front bit of film on the front of the display there, then you get a lovely clean shiny display. Don't forget if you wanna know about this sensor room pure and how that works and how to access the timer on the front of the boiler, you can watch my video on how to install and set up the sensor room pure where I cover everything you should need to know. And there's also the video for the new Valiant sensor room. That's the wireless control where you use your smartphone to control your heating. Both those videos you'll find linked below. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope you found this video useful. If you want to watch my video on the sensor room pure, you can click on the link just here. If you want to watch the video on how to operate the boiler for your homeowner, you can click on that link just there. You can give me a thumbs up. You can click on that subscribe. You can ring on the bell, share it with your friends. And as always, my toolbox fund. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.